We're here inside the Commonwealth Law Courts in Melbourne, where most of the seven rounds of public hearings were held. Each fortnight focused on a different topic, including superannuation, insurance, consumer finance and financial planning. Let's get started. The government opposed a Royal Commission. We have made it very clear that we are not going to establish a Royal Commission. But it was forced to change its tune as renegade coalition members joined the push and the big four banks relented, calling for the government to end the uncertainty. What it unleashed couldn't have been anticipated. For them to do that to their customers is absolutely and utterly disgusting and I hope no one ever has to go through it again. Ms Livingston, how concerned you about criminal charges? Everything that was done in there, you've done worse to me. Commissioner Kenneth Hayne sat on the bench of the highest court in Australia and does things by the book. You will not give her her answer, Mr Young. I'm you not. will not. Do you understand me? Senior counsel assisting, Rowena Orr QC, rocketed to national prominence through her relentlessly fierce questioning. Let's be frank, Mr Wardron, there was fraudulent conduct engaged in by NAB bankers and by introducers. Do you agree with that? Yes, there is, yes. yes. And the baby-faced assassin, counsel assisting Michael Hodge QC, made executive sweat as he dredged out torturous details. And so by my count, this was the 14th false or misleading statement by AMP to ASIC. You're losing count. <laughs> I'm, I'm in your hands in that regard, Mr Hodge. Over 68 days of hearings, 134 victims of banks, senior executives and the regulators charged with overseeing them answered questions. New laws have been proposed, increasing jail time and fines payable for corporate crime, while at the same time, the banks have been punished for their sins. From the time the Commission began to when hearings ended, the share prices of the Big Four and AMP have taken a pounding. That's just the share price. A crippling list of billion dollar scandals has led to class actions, litigation from regulators and the potential for civil and criminal charges. Charging premiums for life insurance to someone who's dead. That's the position, isn't it? Yes, that's, that's the way the system is treating it today. I, said, I saw him depressed for, you know, for a few years. That's why I'm here today, because he couldn't, couldn't come in. So this was conduct that was acknowledged by NAB to be misleading and deceptive, or likely to mislead or deceive? and the shocks kept coming, one in particular. Another day of extraordinary evidence of misconduct by the big banks. The Commission heard Westpac encouraged one woman to sell her house based on incompetent financial advice. The Commission heard of customers being charged for financial advice even after they died. It was brief, but it caught fire. The summary is ongoing services have not been provided to clients. One file client dies in 2007. Contact made with deceased wife in 2013, but no action taken. And the action plan is, or at the bottom, based on the above, recommend a formal warning be provided. Yes. Advisors at the Commonwealth Bank's financial planning business charged fees for personal service to customers they knew had died. In one instance, the fees were charged for more than a decade. How could this happen and it not be something that people further up the chain were aware of or cared about? And why is it then that it suddenly, when it happens in one institution, it comes out as known everywhere? Uh, it's supposedly a huge institution, but there's a remarkable number who are doing the same thing. And it makes you wonder about how big the, in the, the industry is really when you hear these things. The bank wanted to make it legal by changing the terms of accounts, so customers, still alive, would sign off on paying fees when they died. That is what AIL thought that it should do, is 
in the product disclosure statement say we will continue to charge advisor service fees after the member has died? Yes. But it hadn't done so? Correct. And so it formed the view when it's reviewed the issue this year, and in fact it informed the view, I think, to be fair, back in 2015, yes. 2016, that if it wasn't telling members that when they died it was going to continue to charge them advisor service fees, that it shouldn't have been doing so. In, that was in 2015, and on this review, uh, the conclusion we made was that the practice should cease and should never have occurred. It was the icky end of an issue that exploded into a multi-billion dollar scandal. Fee for no service is what it says on the tin. It's taking a fee for a service that isn't provided, won't be provided or can't be provided. But it's worse than that. Imagine if you went to the doctor and they took a blood test. They said they'd examine it and in fact they'll test it into the future to ensure your ongoing good health. But instead they do nothing. They charge you and they give you a false sense of security about your health into the future. That's fee for no service. Initially, fee for no service was thought to be contained. In December 2017, just before the Royal Commission began, the Australian Securities and Investment Commission estimated customers were owed refunds totalling 219 million. By August, that payout was 364 million. But the institutions kept digging and estimated the total bill a jaw-dropping $850 million. We've had 27 investigations uh, as part of that project. I think we've collected more than two and a half million documents. You can see that we've obtained hundreds of millions of dollars so far in remediation and, and more, more, to, uh, more to come. It doesn't give me any pleasure to say this, but I wouldn't at all be surprised if it ends up being uh, in excess of a billion dollars. It gets worse. The repair bill for AMP alone will cost $1.2 billion. About half in compensation, the other half in sorting it out and fixing the problems. And that means it's continuing to remediate on the basis of an approach estimated to take nine years. Yes. And AMP has just found a similar problem in its superannuation division. I think there was reporting up the line to, for example, the legal department in the case of the AMP, but I don't know that it was taken with the degree of seriousness that we looking out as members of the public would be concerned about. I think ultimately what it was seen to be was a, quote, compliance issue, and immediately that you use that term, it kind of neutralises the moral quality of what's going on. One of the Royal Commission's biggest impacts has been on the housing market. It started when ANZ was accused of breaking responsible lending laws by not verifying the living expenses of mortgage applicants. Our processes are we do nothing. There are transactions on those statements that are inconsistent with the statement of position and we don't do anything. Well, do, you, do you think that's satisfactory, Mr Rankin? Um, I personally do, yes. Even when ANZ customers were applying for home loans, the bank still didn't check their living expenses to see if they could afford a mortgage. Instead, they used the HEM, the Household Expenditure Measure. It's a benchmark for how much people spend in a month, but it's a low ball estimate of people's living expenses. What this means is the bank, all of the big banks, were giving people more money than they could afford to service. And that pulled petrol on an already hot housing market. Banks quickly reduced reliance on the HEM figure and have started being more rigorous in assessing mortgages, meaning customers were offered smaller loans. A new report from the competition regulator has found home loans from the big banks are uncompetitive and too complicated. The Commonwealth Bank has admitted that home buyers who get a mortgage through a broker can end up paying more. Taylor made nearly half a million dollars in commissions from the National Australia Bank for signing people up to dodgy loans. Reducing the size of home loans was called a contraction. In fact, it was what they should have been doing all along, following the law. 
we've always relied on the goodwill of banks to operate within the law, but what's actually happened is over the last period, as Ken Hain said in the interim report, we have found that their desire to make money has been at the expense of basic standards of honesty. So in, when we go to that system and say we assume that banks will self-regulate, we now have evidence that they don't and that if we leave it to them, we'll get more of the same. By making it harder for people to get large loans and with potential changes to the mortgage broking industry, don't expect the Royal Commission's recommendations to pump up the falling housing market in 2019. 27 ordinary Australians were selected from more than 10,000 submissions to discuss their personal financial problems and their interactions with banks and financial institutions. So in around November, December 2014, I applied for my first credit card. Problem there. gambler David Harris racked up over $35,000 in debt on Commonwealth Bank credit cards. Despite pleading with the bank to stop giving him credit card increases, they kept coming. I tried to reach out for help and I didn't get any. I got, I got the opposite. I got more credit limit increases sent through. And I tried to tell him I had a problem. I can't believe this. I've been to see the financial planner of the year and this is what you get. There was even another commissioner. Donna McKenna's job is as a fair work commissioner. But the financial advice she received from Sam Henderson was so bad, it would have cost her half a million dollars. I just want to know what my current balance is, please. What is the amount I can roll over? Was that Miss McKenna calling? No. Was that your customer service officer impersonating Ms McKenna? Yes. Did you know that your employee was impersonating Ms McKenna, Mr Henderson? No, I didn't. Uh, for the record that I was not aware of the impersonation. Mm -hmm. I was quite disappointed and uh, I certainly apologise for that behaviour of my staff member. I was incredibly disappointed. It was inexcusable. Mr Henderson's staff impersonated her and a complaint about his advice to the industry body went nowhere. If someone with my educational and occupational background um, uh, hits a wall when you endeavour to engage uh, proper disciplinary uh, processes. What hope are, are other people, people going to uh, have? I've got elders that have been in these funeral funds for years and they've planned to give the money to their family so that they can survive. Tracy Walsh took out funeral insurance from the Aboriginal Community Benefit Fund. The private company is not Aboriginal, has breached federal court orders, shrugged off scrutiny from the regulators and sells policies to babies that could cost as much as $100,000 over a lifetime. Like thousands of Aboriginal people sold the product, Ms Walsh thought that if she died, premiums paid over years would go to her family. They won't. At best, the policy will only cover specific costs, like a casket. But by God, when people find out about this in my community, they're going to be angry. They're going to be scared. I've got an elder that's been in, in, in a funeral fund for years. And they're only going to get their policy back. These people have been used and used and used over the generations. And it's just another profit making off our backs. Thousands miss the chance to tell their story. Farmers, in particular, were angry with the short amount of time set aside to examine complex and long standing issues. Farmer Bill Mott from Meandara, 400 kilometres inland from Brisbane, lost his $22 million estate in a dispute with NAB. Well, it's cost me my marriage. Uh, the second would be that it's, it's um, isolated the children. It's not only isolated them from me, but also isolated them from them, each other. Stories like Bill's were among the 10,000 submissions not aired at the Royal Commission. There's real pain and I don't see that they are ever going to get to the bottom of the real problems in that short amount of time. There was no extension. The final day of hearings was held a year to the day the Royal Commission was called. 
The biggest scalp claimed by the Royal Commission is clear. 170 year old financial services giant AMP. The hits came early, often and hard. And again, by my count then, that brings us up to the 15th false or misleading statement by AMP to ASIC. I take it you've lost count now, Mr. I'm keeping Reed. count with you, Mr. Hodge. Thank you. Misleading the regulator and taking hundreds of millions of dollars in fees for no service from its customers brought the company to its knees. Catherine Redding, can we just get